Hi everybody, I'm Melissa. Thank you so much for following along as I explore the unique charm of Japan's Takarazuka Review. So in last week's episode, I gave a bit of an introduction to the five main Takarazuka troops, as well as a special troop called Senka, and talked a little bit about some of the important roles in each troop, like the top star, top Sumeyaku, and Kumicho. In this week's episode, I'm going to be attempting to answer the question, what's so special about the Takarazuka finale, by giving a little bit of a breakdown of the finale that concludes every Takarazuka main production. Uh, if you're new to this channel, I really recommend first going back and checking out episode two, where I talk in more detail about what a main production is and contrast that with a side production. This week's question is a little bit more specific than previous weeks, um, but the finale is such an iconic part of Takarazuka that I really felt it needed to be introduced early on in the series. That being said, I'm really hoping that some of the elements of the finale, like the Grand Staircase, will come back in and get their own episode in the future. So what is the Takarazuka Grand Finale? Essentially, the finale is how all productions staged at the Takarazuka Grand Theatre in Hyogo and the Tokyo Takarazuka Theatre are always concluded. The finale lasts for about 15 minutes in total and features all of the actresses who appeared in the main production. However, the actresses essentially appear as themselves or as performers rather than as the characters they had been portraying in the main production. The finale is primarily comprised of a series of dance numbers and concludes with a grand parade where the actresses take their final bows. The finale has a really long history in Takarazuka, and while it's difficult to pinpoint exactly when it took the shape it takes today, many of the elements of the finale can be traced back to the 1927 production of Mon Paris, Japan's first review show. While these elements have changed over time, they are essentially the iconic image of Takarazuka that is imprinted in the mind of almost every Japanese person. To give an idea of why the finale is such an iconic part of Takarazuka, I think it's best to try to break down its major elements. That being said, it should be noted there can be a lot of variation in these elements, including the order in which they appear and whether they appear at all or not. In particular, while the finale essentially exists outside of the production story, happening after its conclusion, each finale is tailored to incorporate some elements of the production. This often includes changes to costumes, music and styles of dance. For example, in the 2019 Moon production of I Am From Austria, the Otokoyaku wore costumes resembling Austrian lederhosen, albeit much more sparkly. This means the finale carries on the atmosphere and feel of the production itself all the way until the curtain finally falls. So the first element of the finale is usually a song and dance number performed by the Nibante. Typically, the Nibante, clad in a very sparkly suit, will appear on far stage left via a platform raised from the trap room or the open area under the stage. The Nibante, while singing, will then cross over the Ginkyo, or Silver Bridge. The Ginkyo will definitely get its own episode in the future, but essentially it's a narrow strip of stage that starts connected to stage left, then wraps around the orchestra pit before connecting back up to stage right. Essentially, this means that actresses who are standing on the Ginkyo are standing literally centimetres away from the audience members in the front row, bridging the gap usually necessitated by an orchestra pit between the audience members and the actresses. It should be noted though that this Niban Ten number is not always performed, and in fact it mostly seems to be featured only in the full-length musical style of production. There is a good reason for this. Typically, in the full-length musical production, the top star will appear in the final scene, usually as part of a romantic inclusion. It's much easier to give the Nibon Te time to duck backstage and change into their finale costume. Meanwhile, in the player review type, because the second act will essentially feature a series of song and dance numbers, it's much easier to organise this in such a way that the interlude isn't needed. And plus, the Nibon Te will already have performed plenty of song and dance numbers throughout the review itself. After the Nibon Te number, if it is performed, is a chorus kickline number. This is an instantly recognisable part of Takarazuka and a great way to know that the finale has truly begun, which honestly can be a little bit tricky to recognise in the play review type of production. So the chorus kickline number is also called the Roquette because it closely resembles the famous kickline performed by the New York Roquettes. The Roquette has a really long history in Takarazuka, having first appeared in the 1927 production of Mont Paris. The Roquette is always performed by the younger members of the troupe, both Otokoyaku and Musumeyaku, and is considered a rite of passage within Takarazuka. Often more experienced stars will recount in interviews some of the more embarrassing and humorous experiences they had while training for and performing the Roquette. 
elaborate leotards are always worn during the roquette, often alongside feathered back pieces and or head pieces. The costume and elements of the dance are themed to the production itself. So for example, in the 2018 production of Elizabeth by the Moon Group, the actresses wore military-inspired leotards and danced a sort of military-inspired number. That said, as you can guess from the name, the roquette will always end with the actresses coming together to form a single long line, usually with the tallest actresses in the centre and the shortest actresses on either end. So they will then perform a series of highly synchronised kicks to the audience's rapturous applause. The Roquette, besides being incredibly beautiful, is also a great opportunity to appreciate the talents and teamwork of some of Takarazuka's future stars, and their smiles and incredible energy can bring the brightest of endings to even the darkest and most tragic of musicals. Following the Roquette will typically be a dance number performed by the top star with most of the Musumeyaku in the troupe, excluding the top Musumeyaku. This is usually a slow, sensual dance number in which the top star, wearing a sequined suit, briefly dances one-on-one -on -one with the number of the Musumeyaku wearing glamorous gowns. This number acts mostly to showcase the charm and allure of the top star, as well as giving an opportunity to admire the beauty and grace of the Musumeyaku. This number also usually marks a reveal of the grand staircase, as the curtains behind the roquette performers open to reveal a seemingly impossibly large staircase that has magically emerged at the back of the stage. The Grand Staircase, like the Ginkyo, will absolutely get its own episode in the future, but essentially it's a set of 26 steps that stretch out across the length of the stage, with each step being just 23 centimetres wide. The Grand Staircase features many LED bulbs, and the colours change to reflect the mood of the dance and even the production as a whole. The Grand Staircase also sometimes features designs suited to the production, which can be seen, for example, in the emblem that appeared on the Grand Staircase during the Moon Group production of Elizabeth. So the Grand Staircase is used throughout the finale, often including in this Top Star and Musumeyaku group number. This number will then be followed by a dance performed by the Top Star with most of the Otokoyaku in the troupe. Typically, the otokoyaku will start at the top of the stairs before slowly descending until they reach the centre of the stairs, while the musumeyaku perform on the stage below. This gives the number a kind of menacing atmosphere, as though the otokoyaku were like lions hunting the gazelle-like musumeyaku. After the musumeyaku exit the stage, the otokoyaku will then perform a series of highly controlled and timed, impeccably cool dance moves on the stairs, usually with the top star in the centre, flanked by the Nibante, Sambante, and sometimes Yombante. They will then descend to the stage proper, where they'll perform a high-energy, incredible, and again perfectly synchronised dance number designed to showcase the strength and power of the Otokoyaku. I have to say, this is one of my favourite parts of every Takarazuka production. I really can't imagine a cooler, more mesmerising sight. Notably, this number is often called the Kuro Embi, which is essentially Japanese for coat and tails. It is fairly common for a tokoyaku during this number to wear a tuxedo with tails, albeit bejeweled. And this can pretty much be considered the iconic otokoyaku costume within Takarazuka. That being said, there is a great variety in the costumes that are worn during this otokoyaku number, from the Kuro Embi all the way to much more bright suits designed to fit the theme of the production. After this will be the duet dance featuring the top star and top musumeyaku. This will typically be a slow, beautiful number designed to showcase the connection between the top combi. The top star will be wearing yet again another glamorous sparkling suit and the musumeyaku will be wearing a beautiful matching gown. This dance is usually themed somewhat to match the characters portrayed by the top combi in the musical itself. While the duet dance is always a beautiful part of every Takarazuka production, it's particularly incredible where it features the lift of the top musumeyaku by the top star. This definitely doesn't occur in every performance, but where it does happen, watching the top star spin as she cradles the musumeyaku in her arms is a completely breathtaking sight. The duet dance will always conclude with the couple briefly separating so they can run alongside different ends of the ginkyo before meeting in the middle to conclude their dance. This gives the audience an opportunity to appreciate even further the beauty and connection between the top combi. And that brings us to the final part of the finale, the parade. It's actually a little misleading for me to consider the parade alongside the other parts of the finale because it really should be considered its own element within Takarazuka. 
However, so as not to end on the cliffhanger of the duet dance, I'm going to give a brief overview here and hopefully go into a lot more detail in a future episode. So essentially, the parade is like a curtain call you would expect in any musical, but taken to a whole other level. So typically the parade will start with a group of younger actresses positioned on the stairs with a young up-and-coming musumeyaku in the center. This musumeyaku or the etoile will begin singing one of the iconic songs from the musical production or review. The actresses will then move down the stairs and move to the front of the stage where they will take their bows to audience applause. They will then move to the left and right sides of the stage where they will start to form lines. As the song continues, more actresses will appear at the top of the stairs, walk down the stairs, give their bows, and then move to the left and right sides of the stage. The featured actresses will go down the centre of the stairs, when some of them will continue to sing the song, while other actresses will go down the left and right sides of the stage. The order at which the actresses appear on the stairs is incredibly important and reflects their standing in the troupe, which is very complex in and of itself, but essentially involves considerations of both age and star power. Most importantly, the Nibante will always be the third to last actress to emerge, followed by the top Musumeyaku. After the top Musumeyaku takes her bows, the stage will then slightly darken before a spotlight hits the top star who's positioned on the top of the stairs. The top star will then descend the stairs, take her bows, and all of the actresses will come together to form a long line, singing along to the music. The leading actresses will then step out onto the ginkyo, with the top star positioned in the centre, waving goodbye to the audience. They will return to the stage, and as they wave their final goodbyes, the curtain will lower. While this grand parade is always incredibly elaborate, it does feel really short and no matter how hard you applaud, that curtain won't come back up for an encore unless you happen to be watching a very special performance like an opening or closing day performance. I have read that this somewhat abrupt closure of the curtain is designed to keep you immersed in the dreamlike world of the performance for a little longer as you return home and I honestly do feel like it achieves this effect even if I do always leave feeling a little bit sad that it's over. Some key things to note about the parade. Typically, during the parade, the actresses will be wearing their character's costumes in the full-length musical style production or a costume from one of the review numbers in the play review type. However, you will sometimes see new costumes as well as alterations to costumes to enhance the glamour of the parade. All of the actresses during the parade will be carrying a shanshan. Shanshan is basically a plate-sized disc that features some design related to the production along with a long ribbon. So the Shan Shan is moved by the actresses side to side and up and down in time with the music. And the top star will always be wearing an incredibly elaborate feathered back piece. So this feathered back piece is kind of like a peacock tail but it has its own feathered tails that come down the back of it. It will absolutely get its own episode in the future, which honestly should be this channel's catchphrase at the moment, sorry. But um, essentially it's two meters in diameter and weighs about 15 kilograms. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't feel very comfortable walking down an incredibly tall flight of stairs in high heels with thousands of people staring at me carrying 15 kilograms on my back. In productions, it's also fairly common to see Nibante, Top Musumeyaku, and sometimes some other actresses wearing smaller versions of this feathered back piece. You'll also sometimes see higher ranked Otokoyaku wearing beautiful feathered boas across one of their shoulders. The absolute sort of breathtaking power of the top star as she descends the staircase wearing this feathered back piece cannot be understated, and it is truly one of, if not the most iconic image in Takarazuka. And that is the Takarazuka finale. While there are so many elements I'd love to explore in greater detail in future episodes, I really hope I've given you some insight into the beauty and charm of the finale. Watching a finale, it's impossible not to be captivated by the strength of Takarazuka's otokoyaku, the elegance of its musumeyaku, and the power of all of the members coming together to form one troupe. That being said, it's always bittersweet because it marks the ending of every Takarazuka main production. In next week's episode, I'm going to be attempting to answer the question, what is a Takarazuka top star? By giving a bit of an insight into what a Takarazuka top star is, what their main roles are, as well as how one becomes a top star and who the current top stars are. I really hope you'll tune in. And if you've been enjoying this channel so far, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Please take care. Bye. 
Essentially, this means that actresses, when they're standing on the ginkyo, are standing. <laughs> My cat is behind the camera. <laughs> there she, there she, there she. What? Abunayo. Hi. You're going to break my camera. Okay. I gotcha. I gotcha, baby. It's all right.